Okay, what you just saw was a little taste of how Shroud became known as the King of Reddit, a title he earned by constantly making the top of the CSGO subreddit through clips of his ridiculous aim. His stream kickstarted a dream esports career turned Twitch Titan going live to an audience of thousands almost every single day, but let's take it back just a little bit. This is 2013, somewhere in Mississauga, Ontario. Michael Grezek, or as you know him, Shroud, is streaming Counter-Strike Global Offensive, a game series that was introduced to him by his father. And can I please just say, his father is freaking adorable, and his passion for playing video games is what got Shroud into gaming in the first place. But before he was a streamer, Michael was your typical gamer kid from the days before Twitch and YouTube popularized the hobby. Playing video games was his favorite thing to do. It's how he spent the majority of his free time, and the idea of doing that for a living was a dream, like for any kid. Then Twitch happened, and he saw streamers like Summit1G continuously grow in popularity and get paid to play. As soon as his crappy Canadian internet was good enough, he started streaming. That was in 2011, and under the tag M Eclipse, his first steps towards becoming Shroud. But it didn't happen right away, in fact, he streamed every day for several months straight and got basically no attention from viewers. But what he did get was practice in becoming a better streamer and public speaker. That is, of course, he got no attention from viewers until he started playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive in 2012. At the time, Michael had lost interest in the Counter-Strike series and spent most of his time playing games like World of Warcraft. But his friend wanted him to try out CSGO, so he gifted it to him. What he didn't know was how important that small gift would become. Slowly, his channel began to get attention, mostly because people were interested in watching CSGO. But what these new viewers never expected was for his aim and movement to be so good. His reaction times and aim were so precise that people actually thought he was using an aimbot. But the longer they stayed, the more apparent it became that, no, this kid was actually just that good. That's when he started to make a name for himself. Eventually, clips of him playing were getting posted everywhere and his viewer base was consistently growing, just as he too was growing as a player. First, he dominated the competition in open and intermediate leagues with relative ease, switching his tag to Shroud along the way. But it was after getting second in a season of Maine, where the level of competition starts to get actually decent, that he got noticed by invite teams. Invite, of course, refers to the pro level of play. It had been around a year of streaming Counter-Strike. What started as small, intermittent viewers grew into an audience of fans that watched as Shroud flourished from a kid with amazing aim to a player that everyone wanted to see go professional. That would finally happen when at the end of their season of Maine, Shroud would get picked up by Exertus Esports. Clipped shots at Flom left alive, fighting against four I by power players. I by power is on a buy, as you see, a head armor, no nades left though. I do believe they threw them all, and Eclipse with the double right there in the A bumps against the triple. And if he can get Flom, he's he's got a good chance of getting this. As Eclipse oh, only has 12 HP, oh 13, excuse me. He knows Eclipse is right over there by that red bin in the center of sight. Just threw out the pistol to see if he can ban a shot. They're gonna be right here, and Eclipse gets it. Wow, gotta be careful, Eclipse. Clutch and kill. There you go. There's the clutch and the fuse. Wow, they have the momentum. That's eight unanswered rounds right here from uh, Exodus as they are just running away with the CT side. But this is going to be a CT sided map here. So look for I by Power to come back huge. And Eclipse gets two right there in the A. Breeze through instinctually, blows him away. There's a very nice response. Shroud will bring down Swag and a trade. 
coming from every which direction. There is the final wrap-up. Viewers, if you sleep on Exodus, they're going to mop it up from outside. So Skadoodle by himself, a lot of CTs left alive, trying to make everything he can. That uh, shouldn't ever work, but did work just then. Eclipse steps out, blows away his opponent, turns, gets another, and that's why he goes down, and that's got to be so disappointing. John Gare's in the sight, will be pinned up against those shell produced by Shroud, will give me easily, easily a convincing argument to make him the MVP of Grapple. Quad plus the fuse makes you... <laughs> there it is. Is that the saying, Shroud, you're a sick. <laughs> how, how do you use the sick boost? I want to... He gets taken out from behind, though. AZK is over there. Eclipse gets one kill. It is now two versus two. Skadoodle and Dazed versus Flom. And Eclipse, Flom gets the kill right there on Skadoodle. That's the last remaining CT. He's going to push his way up. That's going to be Dazed. Dazed trying to fight right now. He gets caught from behind. Flom gets it. And Exodus wins 16 like to that. 11. Wow. That I'm was... With Shroud on their team, Exodus Esports finished second in Sevo Main Season 3. A performance that ended up being the exact opposite of how their invite season would go. The team took a massive nosedive right into last place almost immediately after the season began. And just like that, Shroud's career was on a perilous path. But it turned out that Exodus wasn't the only team that saw potential in Shroud. Manajuma reached out to him with an invitation to join their team. He felt conflicted, and naturally so, Exodus had only just brought him on and it was such a big step for him. But with his career in mind, he accepted their offer. This is where he blossomed as a player. Shroud was undeniably exploding from the barrel with potential. But what he lacked were the strong fundamentals of competitive play that are essential to the top level. Manajuma's team leader Irukanji took on the role of helping Shroud develop his foundation. Together, the team earned respectable results. But these were more than just good results for the team. They were evidence that Shroud was capable of making worthwhile plays at a professional level. He has to fight. He does have an M4 in his hand. This is going to be a one versus five. Sprays a lot of bullets, not able to connect. Gets two right there, trying to go for the third, and he gets the third and the oh fourth. Oh my god. Oh my god. If he clutches this, he is the nuttiest player alive. No way. Oh man. Oh my god. Oh god, what the no. fuck? No way. Oh my god. By July of 2014, Complexity Gaming extended Shroud an offer to become a stand-in player for their team. This was a premier organization, a lot bigger than Exertus and Manajuma. Complexity Gaming meant the opportunity to travel around the world and play in front of roaring crowds and giant stadiums. He accepted their offer. First big sponsorship, what is it like to get an org of this caliber? Fucking great. Hey, alright, <laughs> next time don't curse for the children. This team was the real deal. Everyone on it was someone Shroud had looked up to on his way here. To top it all off, Cloud9 purchased them barely a month later. He was C9 Shroud. Their first mission together was to compete at ESL1 in Cologne, Germany. Dominating rounds and clutch plays would earn them 5th place. Not bad for Shroud's first LAN tournament. However, following a weak performance at DreamHack Winter, the team underwent a roster change that kept only Nothing and Shroud. The restructure proved to be successful when Cloud9 ended up finding second place finishes across the summer of 2015. And while these events were full of highlights to fuel Shroud's Reddit title, the real bulk of the clips were still coming from his stream. That's because Shroud genuinely loves and is dedicated to streaming. He would regularly go live after a day of practicing with the team, and that's part of why he has such a positive relationship with his viewers. But momentum hit a snag when the team majorly dropped the ball at MLG Columbus 2016. This was amidst another roster change, and would be the start of a brief negative shift in the team's results and gameplay. Shroud 2 would underperform during this time. 
But once they were settled in with the changes, the results began to dramatically improve. First and second place finishes were the stepping stones, as they made their way to compete in the season's finals in Sao Paulo, Brazil. An event in which they obliterated every single team they touched. Club 9 SK Grand Final starts right now. Pistol rounds. First gonna fall, Bomb's gonna go in, it's Fallen versus three in the pistol and Shroud's got him over the top. Cloud9 will start off with the best foot forward and taking the first round away from SK. Cold, watch Stewie though, he's coming back around, two dead already, a blunder inside a monster, they just spray through, Fallen's got two back in return and it's cold to go down. Fallen with two on an MP7 though is gonna build up some cash for him and he's gonna try and go in another one versus three to get Bomb down and this time Automatic's gonna deny him. Another one-on-one -on -one for Cold Zero. This time he's got time to plant. Beats it out. He knows he's running over. Spot shout in the truck. But now Shroud, he takes the advantage away because just by baiting and getting close, Whoa! Cold can't plant. And what a shot from Shroud. Not the fall walking up mid spot Shroud, but he's already taken down. Well, now three for her as well. Going to boss in a bit of a peculiar situation. Gets taken down by Shroud. If you go for the main take, Automatic's going to be late inside the window. But look at Cloud9, Shroud, Skadoodle, Stewie again. Oh, this is more of the same. SK looking lost there. Shroud trying to find the shots as well as they bypass. Can't find the head, nearly does. Goes back around, he's trying to dance in this. Bomb's gonna be planted, but he might be able to catch this off. Does! It's not great, but something. Nothing finds the first two kills. Lovely work by him. Just need to get three more. Flash comes in, great positioning. Good position to peek out again. They're gonna catch them off. This is done. He's gonna be an absolute slaughter with only one kill going to SK. For his sake, that's massive, because now he can start to round the corner, but it stays at sandwich. Gets them to walk in, gets them to commit. Good duck down from Cold, bypasses the bullets and gets the trade back in. But Stewart comes out from Firebox. He's got two! Cloud Nine. They're pushing each other, they run into each other, and it's automatic that turns back and saves it, comes back into the side itself, and Shroud steps back up. How does that all unfold? This is just getting old fast, as SK can't find anything. Dust 2, not their map, I don't think they're ready for it, and this final is catching them out. Gadoodle with one shot, lines up, misses two, Fallen responds, but now Shroud pops back into the mix, coming out, caught by FNX. And it's now a three versus two, Automatic backing away already. Still a chance for Stewie. Exactly that bomb down from Catwalk. 50 seconds, they have to go for this, and Automatic's flanking around. But they want to contest Stewie, who gets one. It's Cold Zero, bomb down, Automatic in a one versus one. And he's got no idea where Automatic is. He's rotated all the way to Long. And Cold might get caught. He's looking down toward the door. He's in the open. It's Automatic. Cloud9 became the first North American team to win an international premier tournament in 10 years. Easily one of the greatest achievements the team would ever earn with Shroud. But there was an unexpected consequence to all of his success. Shroud is unique in what he means to his fans. He's the likable kid who is loved for his stream and hype clips went pro and helped an American team get first place at an international for the first time in a decade. In that moment, everybody loved him. But in that moment, everyone's hopes and expectations for what he would achieve with his career reached new heights. And that would become a source of disappointment from his fans and eventually from himself. As 2017 started, Cloud9's results once again began to grow shaky. While they had their moments here and there, it didn't quite live up to their performance from the previous season. Shroud, too, was in and out of slumps as a player, but when he dropped the ball now, the impact was felt far more heavily by his fans and by his pride. It took until summer, but they finally hit their stride in mid-May with a series of solid tournament results. At ESL 1 2017, Cloud9 showed up in a form that was reminiscent of their peak, including Shroud in some of his best moments. He still gets the kill. It almost looked like Skadoodle had actually come out on top there. What a flick coming in. Shroud Whoa. getting one of the headshot. He's tapping away, Shroud. Can he do it again? He's up to 11 kills and looking for number 12. Are you kidding me, Shroud? Four kills. Can anyone take this man down? He's got 12 and 0. Oh. He's a one-man army. <laughs> they earned a commendable second place at that tournament. But that was it. The team once again fell apart, and with Shroud's return to below average performances, fans of Cloud9 were quick to lose faith in him once more. At this point, Shroud had started mentioning the idea of retiring. 
He was becoming less sure of his future as a pro player. Hate was starting to seep in from the voices of the internet, and doubts began to emerge at the mention of his name. Good for Shroud. Good for Shroud. I hope he retires. You know why? Because goddammit, that motherfucker will make so much more money, and he'll probably live a happier life. Where lost it? Doesn't have to deal with all these toxic motherfuckers in HLTV who think he's bad for some reason. People think Shroud's bad. It's like, are you fucking me? Shroud is literally so good. It's fucking sad. I hope he retires. Cloud9 was a wild ride that opened Shroud to experiences he would have never had otherwise and led to friendships that will never be forgotten. But it was time for him to change the course of his path. In August of 2017, Shroud stepped down to become a full-time streamer for Cloud9. Understandably, many were left disappointed, but there's something to admire in his decision to retire. Where many might endlessly fight to achieve an elusive dream, Shroud recognized his fleeting love for it all and took a chance on doing what he wanted to do the most. Stream full-time. And less than a month later, he started playing a new game on his channel. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, the game that had been taking over Twitch for all of 2017. For the first time in a long time, Shroud was playing for fun again. PUBG wasn't about getting better for him, it was about having fun with his stream and interacting with his fans. That isn't to say that his amazing aim didn't transfer over from Counter-Strike. All it takes is a quick look at his stream to see how solid Shroud is at PUBG. The dude is quite literally a beast, just stacking chicken dinners like it's nothing. And he's consistently been one of the most popular streamers on Twitch ever since, regularly pulling in an audience of over 30,000 viewers daily. The reason he's so successful on Twitch isn't because of how good he is at shooters. I mean, it helps. But his achievements as a streamer come from his relationship with his fans. Since day one, Shroud has made an effort to show that he cares about his viewers. And because of that, his viewers are dedicated to him. He's also the resident nice guy on the platform, often using his popularity to help out smaller streamers. What's going on? Oh! What the fuck? Shroud has hosted you with 30,317 viewers? What? What? The fuck is life? On April 18th, 2018, Shroud officially left Cloud9, marking the end of an era in his life. Shroud's journey as a professional gamer started from the mutual love of video games that he shared with his father. His affinity for shooters and dedication to streaming helped propel him into a world that as a kid he could only dream about. New friends, new countries, and millions of people to watch as he followed his path of doing what he loves. But all great journeys must come to an end so that a new one can begin. Shroud may have stepped down as a professional gamer, but he stepped up as a full-time streamer a new path to go down, a new way to express his passion for video games, and a new journey to follow. What does the future hold for Shroud? Nobody can say for sure, but whatever it is, his fans will be there to follow. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons, Brendan MK, Mr. Novel, Cat Grat, Andrew Giles, John Mann, Blair Alexander, Bobby Scar, and Jacob Povzikov. Thank you guys so much. You really, you have no idea how much it means to me. It, I, I really, I truly appreciate it. If you like this video and you want to check out something similar, here's a video on Dr. Disrespect that I did. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's at slush underscore SSBM. 